Now, those three verses with verse 52, and there's other places, and for the sake of time, we're not going to go, but these amplify that Jesus lived his life in the flesh. He was the seed of God. Now, let me say this to you. What was the difference between Jesus' birth and life on the planet and your birth and life on the planet before Christ came in? What's the difference? Jesus did not have an Adamic nature. What? He didn't have the Holy Spirit. He what? The Holy Spirit. Who? Jesus. When? <laughs> that's good. I, I like that. That's that's good. Don't don't ever back up. Ask the questions. See, I get questions. So I keep going to the one that's got the answer. What's the difference between Jesus' birth and life in the flesh and our birth and life in the flesh? Jesus had one thing that made a difference. Wasn't conceived by man. He obeyed. He what? He obeyed. No. Born of God. No. Conceived by a virgin. No. Good boy. That's an interesting point. But only God can make a virgin conceived, so don't go home and try it. <laughs> Although I'm a virgin. <laughs> oh, that one went right over your head. <laughs> See, these are all things that have come up over and over and over again, and we have been complacent with the answers that we have received. Mm -hmm. And I probably more so than anybody. So I put myself at the head of the line. So that doesn't leave you at the head of the line. You're not taking the first bullet. I will. The difference between Jesus and us is Jesus didn't have a carnal mind. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Well, the Holy Ghost. I was sitting with the Holy Ghost. And I was reading the Word, and He said, and just out of, I wasn't even studying this. I wasn't even thinking about it. He said, Jesus didn't have a carnal mind. That's the only difference between you and Him in your flesh. Hmm. Adam didn't either when he was first created. Right. Right. Neither did Eve. Right. Yeah. Did we take it out of context? No. Context. I'm pausing deliberately. <laughs> you need to think on this. Yes. <laughs> and you need to look at it in the Scripture. Don't, don't ever take, especially me, don't ever take the preaching and take it to heart. Mm -hmm. If the witness of the Holy Ghost is there and you have the knowledge of God mm -hmm. in the Word mm -hmm. with the Spirit, you'll know the difference. Mm -hmm. Amen. But we need to all be Bereans. Mm -hmm. We all need to be bereaved. How come Jesus had to be made complete? He was tempted in all points as we are, yet without sin. What does that mean? He didn't yield to the temptation. James says that when a man is tempted, he's drawn away by his own lust and enticed. And when lust is what? When lust is what? Conceived. When lust is what? Conceived. It brings forth death. Yeah. Yeah. Why does Paul write under the unction? Why does God the Father speak through Paul or Jesus the Son speak through Paul in Romans and say, if you live after the flesh, you will what? Die. But if you live after the Spirit, you will have life and peace. You'll have life and wholeness. Last night there was a line of people up here. God said, I'm releasing my peace. Uh -huh. yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. And the power manifested. Yes. Yes. Peace, wholeness, completeness. Right. It's already inside of us. Yes. 
Jesus was born without carnality between his ears and behind his eyes. He was not limited by a fallen stature, but he was the seed of God. Come on. That's the answer right there. Now let's go to the book of Acts. See, as sons, we have one pattern son. One pattern. You don't have figures in the Bibles that in the Bible that are types and shadows. You only have one pattern son. One pattern. You know who the pattern son is? It is Christ Jesus, Amen. the Lord. Amen. And I say it in that vernacular in particular, it, that translated in the Greek is the anointed Jesus. The anointed Jesus. Let's see where He was anointed. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38, I want you to listen and I want you to see the wording. I want you to really look at it. It says how God anointed Jesus, the Son of God. Is that what it says? Read it. How God anointed the Son of God. Jesus knew everything. Jesus could do anything. He was the Son of God. Jesus couldn't do anything. Until when? Until He was a he was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. It was not Jesus, the Son of God. It was a man from Nazareth named Jesus that was anointed by God. It was Stephen Moffat from Joliet who's anointed by God with the Holy Ghost and with power. Now you are the sons of God. God anointed Jesus. And immediately He was driven. One translation says... Wasn't he wasn't just led by the Holy Ghost? No, on, on. The Holy Ghost said, "You're going out into the wilderness, and you're going to be tried, and you're going to be proved in the anointing to be worthy of it." Jesus could have failed just like Adam and me and you in the days of his flesh. Bridge the gap. Come on now, bridge that gap. In the days of his flesh. So about 33, 33 and a half years until the time that he was anointed. Boy, this is good stuff. That should cause you to see Jesus in a different light. Made me see him in a different light. Now I can identify him with great ease. He was in the flesh just as I was in the flesh. And guess what? I'm still in the flesh, but I'm living by the anointing. Come on. Jesus didn't say, I always do what I see my Father doing. I don't always, I always say what I hear my Father say until after He was anointed. You need to study. I'm not going to give it all to you. You need to study. <laughs> all right. Ask the author. Yeah. Ask the author. Why? Because God wants you to know that Jesus went through everything you've ever faced. Mm -hmm. And He went through more temptation than you ever will or have been in your entire life. Yeah. And yet without sin yeah. in the yeah. days of His flesh. Freedom through the sonship of not where you have positioned yourself, but by the positioning, the anointing, the grace, and above all, the faith of God. 
makes you a worthy son to release the anointing everywhere you run. Now, that verse is there. Now turn in your Bibles back to Acts chapter 1. Let's see if we can find a similitude. Now remember, we've read 1 John 2, 20, 21, and 27. Collect that in your mind. Keep it in sync with Acts 10, 38. Now let's add Acts 1, 8. And this is Jesus speaking, not before the resurrection, but after. What's He say? Everybody read this out loud. But change this word. Change that word ye to I. Now read it. But I shall see power and the devil will come upon me. And I shall be witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and in our days, and I'll be there until the most part of the world here. Now meditate on Acts 10 38, how God anointed Jesus with the. Don't change that. Leave that right there. <laughs> How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what? The Lord. And with power. Who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed 